We're taking a risk with the design. I know. And you have to take a risk with design. What do you normally pay for such things? As little as possible. <laughs> Rain the two phase of pain. Four fifty the pair. But that's no good for me. Wait for me. I know. Ready? Yeah. <coughs> mm. That's annoying. <gasps> Can you believe that? <gasps> a treasure trove of design classics and we know where to find them. We scout for the unusual. Furniture, antiques, artworks, anything that has the potential for an eye-catching transformation. It's amazing. <laughs> we find them in the most unlikely places and buy them from the most unlikely people. There's a bit of junk chucking about. <laughs> we work for an eclectic bunch of people. Singers, designers, collectors, shops and hotels. Uh, there are a number of specific things I'm looking for you guys to find for me. And of course, we get the best deals. 620. Done. Ah! <laughs> if you want something old, something lovely, something strange, and you can't find it, oh. we will. So where exactly are we heading for, Sarah? We're going off to Kent Church Court, a stately home in Herefordshire. What are you hoping to find there? Well, it's owned by this lady, Jan Scudamore. Mm -hmm. The family's had this place for a thousand years. And she says she has some stables with attics that have loads of stuff in. Right. But it's all for sale. Yep. She just wants to have a bit of a clear out. Brilliant. So you never know what we'll find. Nice, nice to meet you, man. Hi, I'm Paul. Paul, hello. Welcome to Kent Church. It looks incredible, isn't it? This is my daughter's attempt at <laughs> welding, so oh, really? any negative thoughts, keep them to yourself. <laughs> I thought maybe it was African artifact. It went wild with I think it's inspired by a chicken. <laughs> yeah. My home, it's the most amazing place. It's been in the family for, well, nearly a thousand years. Family date back to pre Norman Conquest. I think it shows a sort of form of tenacity that they've married well or acquired acres or foul means to keep it going. Kent Church Court is full of genuine antiques, but Jan feels the estate is too cluttered, so she has invited us to explore some old stables and hopefully buy some items from her. <laughs> Look at these guys. Is this an old butter churn? Have you ever used it? No, I don't think I'd get through the hygiene. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> oh, that should be in the house somewhere, shouldn't it? Oh, pass it in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I needed to make a tea room, so all the things which had been taken out of the house had to be taken up and put in above the stable. So, on the whole, I've no idea what's gone in there because I've forgotten. Nice old wooden skis here. Did you use those? Those are my late father-in-law's. They're really nice ones. Yeah, they're lovely. They look Swiss or German or something. These have a bit of age in them, then, don't they? All sorts. Some hip baths. Yeah, I always like hip baths. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of beds here. Yeah, they would have probably belonged to servants. Are they all singles? They are. What do you normally pay for such things? Well, as little as possible. <laughs> do you have any idea, ballpark? What you I, might I wish? honestly don't know. You know, I haven't got any information. The Victorian beds are a great find. After some minor repairs and rust removal, they should be easy to sell. Yeah, so I'd buy those beds. Yeah, me too. I like them. Yeah, like especially if there's some pairs yeah, of singles. Yeah, singles. There is. There's about, uh, I saw about five at least, the same. Five pairs? No, it's five ones. So two and a half pairs. Two and a half pairs, OK. Yeah. Well, I reckon if we go for two pairs, what would I'd you buy pay more, for no, I'd a bed? Buy more. I'd, I'd happily pay somewhere between 50 and 100. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. Mm. Well, you don't agree with me. It's weird, isn't it? Look at this little chappy, I like him. Oh, that's <laughs> probably the pedigree. No, that's probably what the pedigree is, sorry. <laughs> would you be willing to part with that? I think so. <laughs> I think so. Lovely. This barn is full of curiosities. Full of more treasure. And although we're quite happy to rummage through them, we haven't found anything more tempting than the Victorian beds. And some foot powder. You never know what you're going to find. 
Uh, uh, <laughs> sorry. We go through into the stable. Well, I reckon the beds maybe are the most interesting thing for us. Yeah, I don't know if there's any other things. So you're happy to sell a few bits? Maybe. I think we both agreed that we'd like to have the beds. Yeah, if we can do anything with the beds. Yeah, I think we could work something out. Would you be happy with £50 each? I think there's about eight of those beds. Yeah. So are you happy with the beds? Happy with the beds, yeah. 400 Yeah. And the doggies, bad. you see, they are really very collectible. They're very doggies. sweet. They're very sweet, um, and Sarah wants them. <laughs> Sarah wants them. <laughs> so we'll that's up the ante just a tiny <laughs> bit. So what do you think about the doggy? Beds are something that we'll sell and, you yeah. know. Yeah, but, but I think, the doggy you know, I can is the see character. that they're going to feature in Sarah's life. I'd pay happily 25 quid for them. Would you? Should we well, bid against well, each you other? Can bark. <laughs> yeah, you'd bark happily. <laughs> 400 for the beds. And what about? As, as seen. And what about throwing the dogs in with the beds? No, I'm not going to throw in the beds. No dogs the thrown at beds. What about no. somewhere between 25 and 40? 30. 30. Was that too quick? It, well, it's good to be quick. Otherwise, we'll be no, here all good. evening. You all happy right. with that, Sarah? Yeah, I think that's it then. Okay. Deal? Deal. Yes. Great. Deal. Thank you, man. So how many beds was it in the end? I think we got eight. Sixteen ends, which makes eight mm. singles. <laughs> nice, early design. Mm. Nouveau, aren't Nouveau? English? Yep, definitely Victorian. You reckon? Turn the century, that's a bit of Nouveau there, isn't it? Should we have a look at one? I yeah, haven't yeah. got one together yet. Some of them got the brass balls on, some haven't. Yeah, but that's just easy to replace. You could even put wooden ones, painted yeah. wooden ones or anything. I think these were fine at 50 each. Yeah, I think so too. Because you can paint them, they look lovely in pastel colours and greens. Yeah. You can even do them red anything and put lovely vintage bedding on them. Minimum there's a, I don't know, up to £100 in each bed probably. Yeah, so that's eight. And if you do them, you double that easy. So, you yeah, know, there's easy a couple of grand in it really. Possibly, yeah. Yeah. And our little doggies. No, I love those. Really nice cast aluminium. Thing is, anything for me, anything with dogs on, either I'll keep it or you can sell them like that. What can you get for these in Sarah's written? Well, let's see, we got 30 in them. I reckon if they were restored a little bit, cleaned up, I mean, I see those at over 100, because these are a genuine article, aren't they? Yeah. We don't always make as much as it seems. Transport costs, vehicles, time and fuel are steep and getting steeper, especially for the big or heavy stuff. The thing is, it's fresh to market as well. We're the first dealers to have them. Yeah, no, it was good finding. Yeah. We've got a commission in London. Liberty, one of London's most well-known stores, has asked for our help with a window display. I was reading the history of Liberties and it's like a real, this whole thing was choosed in the most fine stuff, the design stuff, the cutting edge of art. And it still own. is today. Yeah. It's like really respected as a place for, for yeah. high-end design. And it's yeah. like real, it's style setting, isn't it? Yeah. We're meeting Maxine, head of visual identity at Liberty, for a detailed brief. I would love to talk to you today about sourcing some items for us for our next gifting window. So I would say this is kind of an ideal window scheme to look at in terms of it has an element of movement and animation, because ultimately we want to stop the customer at street level and draw them into the store. It is quite noisy here. And this really is kind of a nice balance in terms of the way that the window waves up and down. You have quite a central point in the middle. We've got the animation of the lighting and this kind of flashing heart in the corner there as well. So I've got a mood board which I'd like to okay. show you Great. and run through Perfect. with you and give you an idea of Wonderful. the scheme and then what we'd like you to source. Okay. okay. Okay, so this is the mood board for the next window scheme. So what we need to get across is that kind of really British seaside look. So all of your helter-skelter, buckets and spades, fortune-telling machines, mm -hmm. you know, old-fashioned holidays when you were a child. Yeah. Brilliant. But also kind of bringing in this kind of fairground. Love it, the fairground carnival mm. stuff. That's, that's right up my street. That's it's getting more and more popular. It's it really taken off. I think you're just at the, the forefront minute. of it. Mm. <laughs> instigators. Of course. That's liberty. <laughs> Innovators and that's instigators. Liberty. Budget. The big, big B. Maximum budget um, is about £1,500. Yeah. 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 They're great. They seem to be really enthusiastic about the project. My only worry is they might struggle in terms of what they can get within the very limited budget I've given them. We're heading to Nottingham for the Newark International Antiques and Collectors Fair. Due to its size and diversity, 
it's an ideal place for us to start our search on behalf of our posh new client. So they're going for like basically end of the pier. Yep. Seaside. Yep. It'd be nice to have um, a Ferris wheel kind of thing was on the drawing. Well, a fortune teller booth would be fantastic. Oh, that was one of their, that was on their wish list. Yeah. Do you have readies in your pocket? Yeah, I got the cash. Johnny Cash. This fair is truly massive. It attracts people from all over the world and even has an air freight dispatch company on site to service its international customers. If we can't find something for the client here, we're in trouble. I quite like this. Just there is a lot of stuff. Oh, no. There's decent variety. There's so many What's different... coloured things? We'll probably have that this time next year. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you find these? Off a showman. 165 the pair. They're far too dear, that's the only problem. Markets are not always cheap. The Newark Fair is a magnet for specialists, and they know when they've got a rare collectible. Do you like this kind of thing, Cole? Yeah, I quite like that. Beat in my you? drum. 145. Yeah, this could be sort of in the end of the pier arcade or something, couldn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, I quite like those. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> that's it, now you'll have to buy it. That's uh, 500. Ooh. Oh, they're not cheap things, then. I thought very reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> At £500, the flickball game would be a third of our budget, but it wouldn't be a third of a window display. To make this trip worthwhile, we need to dig a little deeper. Sarah, <gasps> liberties. Don't do that. That makes the price go. I think it's great. Product. Product. Lurid colour as Bright well. Colors. Horrible product. It's been repainted, hasn't it? Yeah, it's great then. What's the matter? Ali. And wood. What you got in this? It's 250. 250. Does it move or anything? It could be made to move. It's got a weird thing going on here. I like it. I'm happy. It moves. I love it. I think it's absolutely great. The Never colour is lurid. Like yeah, they'll Think love how it. good that's going to look in a window. I like that picture too. I do too. What's the story with that thing? <laughs> that's brilliant. <laughs> What does it say, Naga Anti Haran? Naga Ant Haran? What does that mean? Apart from it being early Bollywood, that's early all Early Bollywood? Of, yeah, early Bollywood. Well, has that been hanging in your house? And he's meant to be a real famous well, this guy himself, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's great. <laughs> it's like scenes from a film or something like that. I love these sort of pictures, really badly painted. I ain't been funny, but... Yeah. Naive, they call it, don't they? Yeah. And if I do buy that, then I am being naive. Because <laughs> no one else will ever want if it. If you don't buy it, I might buy it. I really like so it. So we could do, what, 50 on that and 150 on that? I could do 70 on that, but that would be the very best. do 70 on that? Very best. 70. Do you want it that badly? And what about this? You, you said two and a half, so 150 on this. What could you go on this? Very best, 200. Two on that. 70 on that. What about if I said 250 for both? Done. Good man. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. It's a classic end of the pier artifact, so the clown will look great in our London department store. And the colorful Bollywood picture will look great in Paul's shed. Can you see what I can do? Can I look out the back of your establishment? Is that all right? I spotted something through your tent. Is that fairground that you've been making? Yes. Did you make it? All day. I love it. That's just so cool. Where did you guys it? find this? Oh, this came from a local um, house clearance. Uh -huh. Yes. Did it go random? <laughs> it needs a little battery or something, doesn't it? Yeah. And how much is it? Um, I'd like to have £150. Well, that sounds very reasonable. Okay, it is maybe. modern, though, because, look, these are I'd, Allen keys. I'd say it's probably, like, 1950s. Yeah, but, yeah a bit late then. Yeah. It's great, though. What would be your very, very best? My very best would be 120 Oh, that so. sounds all right. But no lower than that. I think you've dropped nicely. I'm not going to be really you know what? I mean do. to you. That's fine. Well, thank you very it's much. a beautiful sunny shake day. On that one, Let's then. shake on it. Thank you very much. You're going to carry it, Sarah? Yeah, I think so. It's not that heavy, it's is not it? That heavy, See, right? I carry all the heavy things. <laughs> I get the light and stuff. And Sarah willingly carries it's the perfect. light. It works perfectly that way. <sighs> that was a good day. How lucky are we? Result. <laughs> Result. I love that Ferris wheel. I think. I hope they like that. Oh, I hope they like that. It's Meccano, it's modern. Just but it doesn't time. look modern. I mean, the, it's colourful and yeah. it's a little bit rough and ready, isn't it? Yeah. Size-wise, it's perfect. Yeah. It yeah, just it couldn't really be good. more perfect. Is 
she's going to love this liberties. They can pull their things in there, their gifting ideas are yeah, on maybe. here. Maybe. It turns. God, I hope we so. can get this working, the electrical thing working. Needs a good tighten up. We need to get the right um, thing for it. Yeah. Tool. We can get, you can get all the Meccano things. They still make Meccano. Yeah. When did it start? Turn of the century. It's been going for 100 years. The first Meccano set was created in 1898 by Frank Hornby. Using some nuts, bolts, and small bits of metal, he invented the toy as a homemade game for his own children. The first Meccano factory opened 10 years later in Liverpool. With its bright paint and endless design possibilities, it was a massive hit. By 1951, a factory in France was producing half a million units a day. There is still high demand for Meccano, with some complete sets selling for thousands of pounds. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's got some writing on here. Can we see what it says? Maker, T. Hanworth, Blackpool, England. So Blackpool, that totally makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, it's an arcade thing, end of the pier thing. Hmm. I like it. I like thing. it, I think, too. It's just, it is a little bit creepy, though. I yeah, hope it's that, definitely creepy. I hope those guys actually like it. Lovely. <laughs> Great. And smile. Got it. We'll whack those over to her and uh, see what she thinks. OK, sounds like a plan. While we wait for Maxine's response, we're off to Wales. Not all of our clients are household names. Sometimes we get requests from individuals who want bespoke and rare objects. Such a client has been in touch. We've got this commission from a fellow named Stephen. Yep. He's got a bullet hole in the Brecon Beacons with a big outdoor space. He's actually said he wants something quite unusual. And Quirky patio furniture. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Right, Sarah, tell me again, why are we going to Wales? Going to church. To church? <laughs> It's this chapel, it's in Abergavenny, and it's getting converted by the owner into something else, so he needs to clear the contents. Okay. So you're thinking mutated pews for patio furniture? Quite possibly. Is that allowed? Well, it's a little bit unorthodox. Unorthodox is good. We might be interested in many of the chapel's contents, but because of the building's listed status, some of it might not be for sale. Andrew, the owner, is going to be on hand to check with the authorities. Hello there. You must be Andrew. Yeah. Oh. Nice How are you, Paul? Hi there, Sarah. Sarah. Hey, Sarah. How are you? Come in. Thank you. Obviously, the village chapel, which used to be full at one time. Looks like it's been empty for a while. It has been empty. I think we've had it about four years now. I think so. It's been at least empty that long. What are you going to do with it, then? Do you know? Well, we're trying to get planning for a little holiday cottage. The chapel dates from around 1860, I think it is. A lot of people didn't want it, obviously, because of the uh, graveyard so close to the chapel, and it being right on the river, on a floodplain. So I purchased it, uh, hoping really to uh, turn it into a holiday home at a later date. Um, I think the graves put a lot of people off, but uh, you know, I think it's quite quaint myself. <laughs> yeah, funny enough, a lot of um, church reclamation, all the really big stained glass windows, the fancy Gothic furniture, all that, goes to Japan, and they re make English wedding chapels out of them, and the Japanese like to get married by an English priest Flipping heck. in an English wedding chapel. God, I can't get over that. That's amazing, that, isn't it? Yeah. They should go for a Welsh chapel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and our organist today, ladies and gentlemen, is Sister Sarah. This is a big hand for Sister Sarah. I'm sure it could be made into a cocktail bar somehow. I'm sure it could. What yeah. do you think? Well, pews is really what we've come for. Yeah. Mm, sizes look good, nice simple shapes. They're already painted, so it's not defiling the wood to, to paint them. Defiling the wood. You know what I mean? I quite like them, actually. Especially yeah. the ones that are much shorter. That yeah. length would be about right. Yeah, it would be, um, yeah, two of those. They're quite light, these ones. They are quite light, yeah. They're, um, they're pine, are they? Yeah, they're normal pine. Well, before we have a deal, shall I just check that I can sell them? Yeah, that might yeah. be Yeah, just give a quick phone call and... All right. Know. Okay, yeah. fine. The pews are right for Stephen's patio, but if it turns out they are listed with the building, they won't be coming home with us. All right. What's the deal then? Twenty quid each. No, they've said I can't sell it. The building's ah. listed. Oh. They're not, they're not willing to let go at this stage anyway. So. We've come all this way to Welsh Wales. I apologise. To look at pews. I do apologise. 
But you've visited Wales. <laughs> We've visited Wales, <laughs> this is true. Just been sorry for them that they couldn't have the pews, but, um, you know, when it's listed, you're afraid to take anything out of the building. I secretly know they both wanted the pews, so I felt a bit disappointed for them. Especially Sarah. <laughs> Leaving empty-handed is frustrating, and there's further bad news. Oh, no, I'm really sorry to hear that. Right, okay. Oh, my God, okay. Right, okay. All right, bye-bye. Oh, no. What's up? Bad news. Bad news. That was Maxine from Liberties. They don't want any of the stuff we found for them. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> I can't believe it. It just wasn't quite right. Well, the Ferris wheel and the claim. So now we have nothing for them, no. and we've blown some of the budget. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Mm. That's annoying. So what do they want? Is she just a mess, do you think? No, I don't think so. She, they just have really particular ideas about what they need. Yeah, well, they need to give us a clearer idea, because that's a pain. Well, they definitely need a fortune teller okay. thing. They're really keen on that idea. OK. Really tricky. Having our purchases rejected by Liberty and being denied a set of pews in Wales on the same day has left us short of time and empty-handed. So while Paul chases leads for pews for our client Stephen in Wales, I've come to meet collector Steve Green, as I've heard that he might have something of interest. Hello. Hello. I'm Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Steve Green. Nice to meet you, Steve. We've got everything, what I've collected, ranging from all sorts of walks of life, you know, what I've collected over the last sort of 25, 30 years. What's he doing in there? Also, I go around to loads of auctions, farm sales, boot sales. <laughs> What is it? <laughs> so you've just got to hunt the collectibles out, and they are out there. It's just finding them. Quite heavy. Steve's collection is spread over his 10-acre small holding, and apparently the item I've come for is hiding in this freight container. All stored away. I not see daylight for a while. Ooh. Wow. you got some really nice stuff in here. Yep, that's our army clock. 61016, 1916. Yeah. yeah. So that's got to be worth yeah. a, a bit, hasn't it? A couple of hundred, I should think. This is nice as well. Yep, yeah, it's a Victorian tea caddy inlaid. It's got the little lids with it on top. That's good, because usually the lids are gone. No, Super collectible, though, huh? You could probably sell that yeah. any day of the week. Ooh. That's 1925 <gasps> Webley air pistol. Oh. All in original box. You know, I have a real fondness for firearms. Yeah. <laughs> Being an American. It's got the original little darts in here. Wow. And it's Still box. That's great. Very collectible. God. Do I even want to ask you what that's worth? A few hundred? Yes. Really? Yeah. Ooh. I paid hundreds for it, you know? Yeah, it's nice. Very nice thing, that. Yeah. What about this? This is a bit special, isn't it? Yeah, that's uh, an old fortune teller. Uh, it's approximately about 1910, which would have come from the East Haven, the fairgrounds, and like the arcades. And used to put the pennies in. Yep. And obviously you'd get your little card to tell you the fortune like that. So they used to give you. Obviously they had a speaker in there, so she just spoke, and the light lights up. That's her crystal ball. Right. Does it still work? Still works, yeah. But she's got fortune teller eyes. You know, it's really scary. interesting. Would you sell this one? I would consider selling it. Right. <laughs> you know, if the price was right. Am I afraid yeah. to ask the price? <laughs> <laughs> Probably about around the two thousand pound mark. Ooh. This fortune teller is a rare find, but at that price, I am not willing to bite without Maxine's approval. Hi, Maxine. Hi. Hi, yeah. <laughs> well, listen, I found you a choice item. Okay. It's um, one of those fortune teller booths. Oh, amazing. That's fabulous. It's pretty good. It's quite an interesting one. The face is nice and has glass eyes. It has kind of a 1920s feel to it. The only kick is that it feels a bit out of budget to me. He started at about two, then he mentioned 1750. It's really tricky, there's just not many about. Okay, if you can go down to one five, then you can go for it. Okay, yeah. I'll do my best, but if not, then should I just walk away from it? Call me back. Got it. Okay, I've had a chat with the client. 
and the client does like it. The trouble is, the budget they said originally was a thousand to twelve hundred. Right. And I know yours is way more than that. Yeah. You yeah. mentioned two, maybe seventeen fifty. It would be, I said, around the seventeen to two thousand, but closer to the two thousand because really? purely because. Where do you find another one too? Yeah, you I know, understand. So it, the thing is, I mean, I did, I brought money, you know, I, yeah, I was hoping that yeah. you'd have something for me to buy today. Is there any wiggle at all? I'm thinking more like 1450 I would do it for 16 that would be the rock bomb. 1600 pounds for a 1910 original fairground fortune teller. Yeah. Where do you find them? Uh, I suppose if I felt 100% that it was really the exact right thing, then I probably would do that, but I feel like we're still going to put some work into it. I might have to change some of the clothing as well. OK, I'll tell you what I'll do, Sarah. I'll do £1,700, and I'll throw in the air pistol as well, in with the deal. How did that seem? It's just making me nervous. What about 1650 Still dropping quite a lot, but we're sort of near there. Yeah, I know. But look what you've got. <laughs> uh, OK, then, we've got a deal. You do that? I do that. She was one of my favourite pieces I had, actually, the old fortune teller, you know. So I will miss her, but I expect I'll replace it with something else, something could come along and then a collectible. As you can see, I've got a lot of stuff, so it just give me a little bit more room to get more stuff in there. After some minor reupholstering, I think this fortune teller will be perfect for the window display. That lights up, then. It works. Well, there's something to be said for it. Yeah. She looks like a sort of bit of a 50s housewife. It's got glass eyes in it, which is interesting. Yeah, glass eyes are good. It could but... add a bit of age as well. I mean, it's, it's fine. I think we can make yeah. it work. It's a good thing, isn't it? I mean, the yeah. cabinet's quite interesting. You know, it's got some age in it for sure. Yeah. It's really hard to find this stuff. And I think Liberty appreciates that as well. Yeah, no, I think it'd be great Because they haven't had any luck up. finding one. Yeah. I got it. You do? Yep. I think they'll be happy with that. Yeah, OK, so I think if you want, you want to replace this, you should, red velvet. Let's put some effort into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's really go for it and make it as, you know, great as we can. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe some tarot cards would yeah. be nice. I do they? have some tarot cards somewhere, Brilliant. Let's do that. Let's really go for it. I've got a lead in Essex. A man called Chris owns a reclamation business called The Greenhouse. He has stock, including fireplaces, bricks and lampposts, and, rumour has it, some pews, which we might want for Stephen's Brecon Beacon bolt hole. This um, pew hunt is beginning to wear me down a bit. Didn't like driving all that way and coming up with zilt. But there's a possibility that this other yard there may be the right. All right. Pews, not well, we have to keep looking until we find them. So. Yeah. I think this is the place. Sure looks like it. Right. Needs a wash, that thing. Hello. Oh yeah. Hi, I'm good? Paul. Yeah. Hi, Paul. Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Nice I'm Chris. You. Mind if we have a quick look around? Of course not. We've got a good load of stuff here. Yeah? How are these selling these days, the old fireplaces? Uh, not bad, but you've got to restore them. We haven't. I think at the moment people aren't doing so much work to their houses. Money, isn't it? Yeah, that's nice. What about this? Is that a grand <laughs> picture or what? <laughs> well, this is a bit of an interesting one. Huh? That was at Madonna's house. Yeah, yeah. Well, did she know you got it? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> what are those? Door plates? Yeah. yeah. Medieval fireplaces to a Budweiser neon. Yeah. So where do you get it all? Here and there. Yeah. You go out searching I've, I've for it. I've my sources. Oh. Anyway, you ain't bought anything yet, have you? No, we look it. We look it first. Look it. We do mainly reclaimed York paving stone, statuary, antique, garden furniture, or garden. Uh, pots and planters, so oh, that's what we do, really. Yeah. These are cute. We've had lots of enamel signs in the past, but they really are mm. harder to find originals. What's that one, for example? 30 quid. 30 quid, it's a cute mm. little guy, isn't it? Made in USA, one of your lot. Hey, hey! Might put that in the pile, then. <laughs> I think that might be in the so bad it's good category. That's a good thing. You think? I like that. I think you just bought it. That's kind of a cute little fellow. I might have... Something I can do with that. What do you want on that? 20 quid. 20 quid? I'll tell you what, we're cheaper than a boot fare here. It's for nothing, isn't it? What we're really looking for. What you're really, really looking is for. Is some pews. Follow me. If you'd have opened your eyes, you'd have seen these straight away. 
church pews. Church pews. Church pews. Three of them. Uh, nice, pews. ornate. I better not big them up too much because you'll be asking a lot of money from us, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they're heavy enough. Heavy enough to be worth, worth a lot money. of money. Yeah. <laughs> Solid, beautiful wood. You know the trouble with pews? Yep. They were popular a few years ago. Yes, they but they're are. too big for it. They're too long. Yes, yes, too... yes. But if I tell you the price of them, you'll really be happy. Will I need to sit down? If you are sitting down. Come on, then. Look, 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 they were four fifty each. <laughs> my other yard. But there, they are. Yeah. I'll do the pair for four fifty. And so, that's, that's for nothing. That so is for nothing. Tell me this. How long have you had them? Six years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had them. That's <laughs> why, you see, they're not big sellers. I'm not a great lover of pews myself, but no. we do have someone who wants them. That's right, exactly right. He's, he's mentioned having them painted as well. Do you think that's a bad thing? <laughs> Shall I tell you some of the things he's wanted them painted in? Cool. For instance, Frisian, like Frisian. a black and white cow. <laughs> he, honestly. <laughs> he's yeah. on about putting them on wheels. Is yeah. that a good idea, do you think? Nah. <laughs> not my opinion. Honestly, an artist. He's not that, <laughs> that, that fellow who lives in Chelsea. Is he? What's his name? Damien Hurst. No. <laughs> I'm not sure yet what we should do with them, but let's no. get them anyway. And we'll once we get them back to the barn, we'll figure it out. What do you think about the money? Um, four fifty. Is that what he said? The pair, two two five each, basically. I'd love to get that down a little bit. Yeah, but what about but your other see. bits? We've seen the rocking chair. That little there. rocking chair, I think that's quite sweet. And there's a couple of bits I want thrown in, that little lamp. Well, let's and... see, maybe we'll do this little package deal then. Yeah, what and the um, funny, stupid phone. Only because I think it's... Yeah, <laughs> the clamshell thing. You know I like yeah, stupid I things. Um, but I'm thinking I'll bid in four with all the stuff, but I don't think I'll have that. You might. OK, let's try it. Well, so, there's a few things in there that we've piled together that we would probably like to take off your hands. Is there? Mm. Well, it's the pews that we're um, interested in, isn't it? Maybe. Yeah. Four fifty the pair. Yeah, but that's no good for me. Oh. I'm not a million miles You're away. Hard work, you are, isn't oh. you? We got what else? We got a little rocking chair, yes. which was a score. You got the little enamel picture, thirty quid. That's fifty. And there's a couple of other bits like the phone and the lamp that will just sweeten the deal if we come to something in it. <laughs> type of thing. <laughs> Where'd you find him from? I know. I'm just getting into it's my flow. It's no use me trying to That's train That's a fantastic him. Art Deco phone, that is. So where are, we, where are we up to, anyway? Well, well I'm up to about 550 you see, I wanna, quid. I want to bid you about you. 300 quid for the pews. That's what I see him at. Do you? You've got a cash deal. Go on, go on. Cash deal. The whole lot. Yeah. There aren't a lot there. Yeah, go on. The whole lot, 400 pound, cash deal. The whole lot, 400 pound. Cash deal. Deal. I had my trousers down. <laughs> <laughs> nah, fair deal. I mean, he's bought them for nothing, isn't he? Years ago, I would have got 500 quid each for them. A few years ago. But times have changed. We got what we came for. The pews will be ideal for the patio of our Welsh client, Stephen. And I reckon we can make a couple of hundred on the other stuff. Well then, Sarah. That turned out to be a little lucky stop, didn't it? Yeah, no, great. Chris had the pews. Good pews, good price. Yeah, good price, definitely. Good little other bits. I love getting little bits thrown in. Yeah. Well, OK, this fellow Stephen, he has some crazy ideas. He wants to possibly paint them cow print. But I kind of hate to demean that furniture. I yeah. think I think... Uh, Do you think painting it demeans it? I just feel that, that doesn't really sit quite well with me. I just think it's kind of an insult. Right, left. Yep. Is that in? And lovely. Brilliant. Let's go. OK. How are you feeling about um, uh, Madame Fortune teller, Sarah? I hope it's OK on the roof. It's strapped <laughs> down pretty well. I'm really, I'm actually quite worried about this. I think it's just because it's liberties and millions of people see it. It's the centre of London. It's a huge thing. Isn't I know it? it's an iconic place. Isn't yeah. It? Hopefully, when they see it, they'll be pleased. But I am. I'm a bit like that about it. Yeah, I know it. I would have liked to do more to that inside. And it's quite a lot of money as well. Fingers crossed, eh? Yeah, definitely. Done our best. Let's hope the best is good enough. Yeah, OK. 
So I'm just going to get it over the edge. Yep. Okay, down slowly. Yep. You're in down. Right down, lower it down. down. The fortune down, teller down, is a delicate down. object. I can barely watch as Paul moves it into position for Maxine's approval. I do hope you're going to like it. <laughs> been a bit of a beast to get. Oh my god, that's amazing. That's incredible, guys. It's brilliant. It's perfect. Wonderful. Oh my god. Yay. I'm relieved it's to hear fabulous. you say that. We've got the glass so you can take it out if you need to put anything okay. in there, I think. Does, so. the, does this light up? Yes, yes, it does. That's amazing. Oh, that's a great paisley print, that. which is fantastic for mm. liberty. Right. And where did you get it from? Way out Sarah got it. in a farm, wasn't it? It's perfect, guys. Are you well happy? done. Yeah, I'm really, really happy. Good oh, job. Brilliant. With such high standards, Liberty were hard to please, but a great client to have on our books. We've got work to do to get our pews ready for the Welsh barn conversion. Work that leaves us slightly uncomfortable. So we're happy to cut these pews. I wouldn't say happy. To cut these beautiful old church pews. This is a bit wrong. Well, we're taking a risk with the design. I know. And you have to take a risk with design. I've changed my mind. There's no going back now. These pews will need to go through a drastic transformation before being presented to Stephen in Wales. Church pews can be used in any room of the house. Although typically rugged and heavy, they can be softened with colorful throws and cushions. And if you don't want a natural wood finish, they can be painted to match any interior. Also, there's more and more coming onto the market, so you should be able to get a bargain. Someone there. <laughs> Hiya. Hello. Stephen. Sarah. Come on in. Nice to meet you. Paul, Hiya. Come nice on to in. meet you at last. Nice open space. It is. It's a barn. <laughs> is it? <laughs> I bought it as an old wreck. There was a dead sheep hanging from the rafters. <gasps> right. Um, it's 200 years old. Obviously, nobody's ever lived in it. Yeah. It was full of muck, no roof. And then a year later, bang. What was this? Brilliant. Nice. So what inspired you to ask us to create these items? Well, I've got all the barns sorted, there's three of them, yeah. but last year we splashed out and got a massive patio, which now looks a bit empty and I've got nowhere really for people to sit. Okay. Right, you entertain a lot? Yeah, I do. But people find their way here to be entertained. The today. people I want <laughs> yeah. to come here, I give them the postcard. Yeah. I run a company called Mr Producer in Cardiff, which does sort of big events like the Ryder Cup concert we did last year, and it's pretty in your face in work. So at my age, I thought I needed somewhere to chill. So I found these three barns, which are literally five and a half miles from anywhere or anyone. But as always with anybody creative, you tend to still bring your work with you. And my friends tend to come as well. So I need somewhere for them to sit. Oh, Are you yeah. nervous? Extreme. Yeah. I can Extreme. smell your fear from here. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Because <laughs> we've done something that's quite outside our own taste. But we're <laughs> hoping, <laughs> and it's a bit of a risk. We're just hoping that we've done something that matches your expectations. Right, Sarah, should we um, wheel them on in? We're going to have to sooner or later. Before we get there. <laughs> I want a mix of traditional and slightly um, Modern, I suppose. Something a bit crazy. I hate prissy looking things. I hate things that look a bit forced. But I do like something that makes me smile. Something with a bit of wit to it. Um, childlike, I'm looking for. I like traditional stuff. But I like it a bit funky. Basically, I don't know what I want, do I? That's what I do when I'm nervous. I faff with cushions. What do you reckon? Well, they're done now, so... Wow! That is crazy! That is amazing! I really like it. 
But look at this. That's beautiful, isn't it? That's the real thing. <laughs> that's the real thing. God, that is brave. That's what we kept saying, right, we've got to be bold. It is brave, Extreme. but I did say bold, didn't oh, I? Yeah. These make it. These, don't they? Yeah, they give it a bit of height. They're funny. Shape. Because that is just bonkers. I mean, when you put this in, it's witty. Yeah. If you can ever find your way back, you're yeah. more than welcome to come and sit on them. Thank Lovely. you. Lovely. You're not having them back. OK. <laughs> All right, right then. Ahead. Find right. our way out of Wales. Thanks. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. What do you think? I think that was an extreme commission. <laughs> and, uh, I don't want any more of those. <laughs> it was right out there, and it could have gone either way. I wouldn't have liked to be in their shoes because to make something for somebody on the mad brief I gave them, they must have been really quite nervous. I would have been. It is very cheeky and it works. It is cheeky. Well, I'm not sure what we're going to do with this, but I do like it. Yeah, me too. It's a shame that Liberty didn't need it. I know, but we did really well for them, didn't we, with that commission? Yeah, they were happy in the end. And what about all those bedsteads? Yeah, you've sold a few of them, haven't you? Yeah, about half of them. Great. What'd you get from? About 100 a pop. That's all right, because we got them for £50 each, so yeah. that's profit. And that stuff from the greenhouse, where we got the pews? Yeah. Rocking chair, mm -hmm. the enamel sign, mm -hmm. clam phone. Yeah, I think we made about 250 on that lot. Yeah, and that's fine, isn't it? Yeah. So I reckon all in all, yeah. what, we spent about three grand? Yeah, we made about three and a half. So we made 500 pounds. Yeah. And we've come out with some extra things as well, like this toy for you to play with. That's it. Next time, Paul plays hardball. I made my final offer. This is my final offer. 900 pounds cash. Otherwise, I walk away. Our job for Topshop exposes us to some painful facts. It's for visualising the esophagus. In a so, person, yeah. not a horse. No, in a person. <laughs> and Paul goes to auction. 700, yeah. Yeah, go on. Yep. Yeah, 750, yeah. I guess it's very heavy. <laughs>